Thank you for evaluating the Tata Technologies Design Assistance and Quality Assurance Tool, iCheckIt for CATIA V5. From its inception, iCheckIt for CATIA V5 was designed to not only be a very robust release checking tool, but equally if not more robust as a tool to be used by the designer throughout the entire design process. iCheckIt for CATIA V5 is fully integrated into the CATIA interactive environment. It is also available in the batch environment through a batch graphic user interface. So in the workbenches that apply to CAT product, CAT part, and CAT drawing documents, you will see the iCheckIt toolbar. In addition, under Tools Options, under Infrastructure iCheckIt, we have the settings that the CATIA administrator can set to configure the iCheckIt environment within a particular CATIA environment. The process starts with the iCheckIt administrator, which is the tool that allows you to edit and create standards. Standards are collections of checks or what we call requirements and that standard is what is applied to a document. So it, a standard might have 10, 15, 20 checks or requirements in it. The checks are applied to the document from top to bottom. There are groupings, etc., that you can do. And in the iCheckIt administrator, we have access to the dictionary of checks or requirements. On the left-hand side, if I open that up, they are categorized by methodology the ability to capture your methodologies and best practices and test for them, geometry to test the status of your geometric elements, and presentation for the testing of the way that they are in hide show, their colors, etc. So let me open, open up the presentation leg. What we've seen so far here are the groupings, the plus sign indicating that there are requirements or other groups beneath those, and finally we're down to the requirements level. At the requirements level or at the check level, let's, let's pick presentation fill color. When I select it, on the right hand side, I get help information about the pass fail conditions in reporting. Why is it important? Why do I want to do this? How do I remedy it within the CATIA interactive environment? So there are instructions for checks that do not do any kind of an enforcement. We do not change form, feature, or function of your geometric data. So there are instructions on how to fix the things that I check, I check it has detected. Attributes as to how to configure that particular requirement to meet certain conditions candidates that this requirement can be applied to and you can select one or more of those on the candidate list and then finally what behavior the requirement or check has there are three behaviors check only enforce only and check with manual enforce check only says point it out and you go f I'll point it out and the designer will fix it enforce only says I'll find it and fix it and check with manual enforce says I'll point it out and give the designer a tool whereby he or she can at their discretion determine whether to enforce it in their particular document. The creation of a standard which is a collection of checks is done very simply by starting a new standards document. Let me just maximize this here in the middle, middle panel and I simply drag and drop a requirement into the standard double click on that requirement to get its attributes, candidates, behavior, conditions, and scoring and then make modifications as I see appropriate. Let's say I want all of my uh, uh, part bodies to have a blue color. So I'm just going to change this to 255. Reset properties boolean says do you want to reset it if it's not or do you just want me to point out the ones that aren't so I'm going to say yeah I want you to reset it. Under candidates all bodies which include both inserted bodies and the main part body geometrical sets and or particular features well I'm going to go with all bodies I want all solids to have this color. Behaviors check only, check uh, enforce only, or check with manual enforce, which is the default. Well, I'm going to select enforce only so that it's automatically going to change them to a blue color for me. 
Conditions allow me to condition the document by that what document I'm going to apply this standard to by the name of the document, by the document type, and then we'll see later on we can actually set up conditionals and say if this is true and something else is not not true or or exclusive or and we can do groupings within the conditional so I can set up very sophisticated checks that are designed only as conditionals and then those checks can be checked with this tool within the or this setting within the requirement to see whether those conditions are met and I will execute this particular requirement based on those conditions say okay to that well, presentation fill color doesn't really say anything, so I have the ability as the administrator to actually rename what this requirements name is. So I could say all solids blue. And that way I'm communicating to the end user, designer, engineer, whatever, what the requirement is actually doing. Remember, I can configure it for any color that I want. I can say that I'm going to uh, automatically enforce it or not. Well, it might be all, uh, also nice within that naming to say, oh yeah, by the way, I am going to enforce this. So if you don't see this on the failure list, it's because I am automatically enforcing it, as an example. Then I would simply file save as this document into the location that I want to use that I'm pointing to with the tools options settings that I have used within the environment. So this folder location will look for standards in that particular folder location. Okay, so we're getting ready for a design review. Unfortunately, we wait a little bit too long. We only have a short period of time to do some checking. And obviously, we brought up this uh, drag brace assembly and discovered that somebody has been messing with one of the spindles at, at the one end. So we want to quickly correct that problem and prepare this document for a design review. So this would be an example of where you would use it, not in the context of release checking, but in the context of the downstream process of doing a, a design review. And I want to do certain things for the, for the uh, design review context. In order to look at the spindle, I am actually going to open it up out of, out of this main assembly. So it's the upper spindle that seems to have the problem. So I'm going to open that up in a new window. That's also a sub-assembly in and of itself, the spindle with two bushings. So I'm going to open the spindle up so I'm right down to the spindle level at the cat part level so that I can address it at the cat part level. The first or the uh, leftmost tool on the toolbar is the I Check It Monitor tool. That is the one that allows me to select and apply standards, collections of checks, against my document. I start it and I get a dialog. And in this case, what I want to do is do basically what I would do for part release. So this might be an example of the cleanup that you would do when you're releasing a part. The name of the standard is part release. I really don't know anything about it yet. Well, I have a more button that allows me to open it up. And here are the four requirements that I have configured within this standard. So I'm going to update the solids, make sure everything's all up to date, hide all the sketches, make sure there's FTA on the document, and make sure that the top part body is the define in work object. Apply button allows me to apply that to the document. A progress indicator showed up quickly down there at the bottom. And what I get is a report. Summary shows how many requirements are in the standard, how many of them failed, how many of them passed, and how many of them had non-applicable candidates. So it looked for the candidates and couldn't find the candidates. In this case, there were zero non-applicables, three passes, and one failure. So if I go down to the reporting section for the past, there's my three that passed. And I have one failure, and that failure is the top part body is not current. In this case, for the purposes of demonstration, I have made this a check with manual enforce. In a true release standard, this would be an automatic enforce to make it the, the, the defined name work ob object automatically. When I select either one of these, I see a tool that highlights over here on, my, on the sidebar for my I Check It monitor. And that, if I park on it, I get a tooltip that says that's the fix tool. So I can fix all of the check with manual and force 
failed requirements under this grouping. In this case, there's only one. Or I can select them individually so that I can fix them individually. In this case, I'll just select it and do a fix. And the fix is it's going to make the dummy, the defined in work object, uh, at the top of the part. But all of the parts are active now. So I can see that I have my spindle in a condition that I can actually do the design review. In this case, I'm going to indicate that visually. Ready for design review? Apply that. And what this particular standard is going to do is simply change the color to a green color so that during the design review, I have the ability to, to visually see what it is we're going to talk about. And that can be communicated visually to the other participants. I could have combined these two standards the part release and the yes design review ready into another standard. So I can take existing standards that have multiple checks in them and include them in other standards. Therefore, I can have a standard that contains a generic set of product naming or part naming requirements or checks and include that in 10 other standards so I don't have to be replicating them across the standards. When I say close, I've turned on an option that says the last thing that I did before the close is going to have a data tag placed into my document. So yes, design review ready is the standard that I ran, and it has a validation status of passed. I'm going to close this document and not save it to disk so that I can preserve my original demo files. And you can see that the in session is turned on so that I actually see the green coloration and the redo of the solids showing up in my subassembly. So now let's look at the subassembly level. I have a CAT product oriented standard that will check for design review purposes a subassembly, do the apply. And I get two failures. The product does not have a PDR flag. Well, in this case, what that really means is I'm going to rename the part to PD underscore PDR underscore and the part number so that I don't inadvertently save it back to the production location. And the other one is that there's clashes between parts. Let me open that up. The candidates is the part itself. And if I open down to this level, I see that the spindle upper drag brace clashes with one of the bushings. Obviously, I've made it very obvious here what's going on. So I can now um, close this and actually fix that problem interactively. So I'm just simply going to coincidence the two axes for that, do an update on the part, rename the part number, to start with PDR so I don't inadvertently overwrite a production document. Rerun my standard. Make sure everything's OK. And that passes. In addition, I have bushings in here. Let me open up one instance of the bushing. OK, these are instances of the same part. So when I open one, I'm actually going to be affecting both of them. And I want to make sure that the bushing, for example, is prepared for the design review. And we're kind of getting down to the wire here for getting ready for my design review. But I'm going to use my design review prep standard, apply it, Requirements failed says, oh, wait a minute, I don't have FTA on here. I don't have material on here. Uh, I can fix this one real quick and make the, uh, the main part body the defined in work object. But I really don't have time to put these FTA annotations in here, etc. So in this case, I'm simply going to say that this one is not ready. Again, I could have done a conditional on the first standard to see on the first set of requirements and then actually done the yellow coloring all in one standard. I broke them into two pieces just for demonstration purposes. And again, when I do the close, I see that that's the last thing that I had uh, that I ran within the monitor, and therefore I get a data tag for that. Close that one, and you see that I now have a yellow color for both instances of the bushing in this part. Close this. Again, don't save the subassembly. 
and now my document is ready for design review. So what have we seen? Number one, ease of use. Integral toolbar and tools options setting within the CATIA environment that have the look and feel of CATIA, so it seems like a natural set of tools to use. And for large quantities of documents to be processed, there is the ability to run it in batch, either command line or via a provided graphic user interface. There are over 330 easily configurable methodology, geometry, and presentation requirements that you pick from the dictionary in the administrative tool, drag and drop into the standard, double click to configure, rename it so the end user knows what it's going to be doing, and you're ready to go with that standard. Add-on dictionaries, we have the main dictionary that's built with the entire iCheckIt product and we have the ability to for customers who want specific checks proprietary to them to have an add-on dictionary so I can have a second or even third or fourth I can have as many add-on dictionaries as I want of dictionaries that contain items that are proprietary to my particular organization that I can provide to my downline suppliers by a license all the add-on dictionaries are licensed so that way I have requirements or checks that are proprietary to me that are not being distributed generally. Scoring and quality metrics. Quality metrics is the ability to capture the results of applying a standard to a document every time it is applied into a report file that goes into either a folder or soon to be a database those report files are then collated into a Microsoft Excel compatible file brought into Microsoft Excel with a set of tools that are provided with an iCheckIt for CATIA v5 add-in to Excel that allows you to do reporting and filtering of that data so you can filter by date you can filter filter by user ID so you can look at the quality metrics data across different aspects of the data Scoring is the ability to take the pass-fail condition and turn it into something other than pass-fail. I want to pass and then I want warning one, warning two, warning three, warning four gradations in the middle of that. And that's what scoring will do for you. Conditionals allow the logical control of not only requirements within the standard, but also groups within the standard. So similar to what you saw in the uh, I check at administrator you can actually group your requirements within your standard and then you can run a conditional requirement and test for that condition for the entire group so project one two three I want this group of requirements to be run project four five six I want this group of requirements to be run that can also be done at the standards level so you can have a conditional that is is this a hybrid design part? You don't allow hybrid design parts, so you don't even run the standard at all. You simply detect that and then terminate the execution of the standard right at that point. So for quality metrics, you can actually track the evolution of teams, sites, projects, etc. You get some reporting tools that allow you to create pie charts, in this case most common failures that you can select uh, which ones to go on there, the top 10 failures. This, can, this data can also be used for things such as, gee, maybe we need some training on our internal best practices because we seem to be uh, missing those a lot. We seem to be getting failures on those a, a lot. And then there's not only Six Sigma, but also return on investment reporting built into the tools that are provided. Scoring, I give weights. So the weight value that I specify determines the severity of that particular element and then I can do my pass, fail, and multiple gradations of warnings in between based on those weightings. I can elect to have the weight of a particular requirement uh, uh, multiplied by the number of candidates that failed. So if I've got 450 things that are the wrong color, that's a little bit more severe than just having one item of the wrong color. Or I can just say that the requirement failure itself is only that single weight. 
So I have uh, the ability to do weighting by their seriousness and I can determine whether I'm going to terminate the entire standard by the weighting and then I can collect them into groupings for, dis uh, for reporting purposes with the tools within Excel. So not only does the quality metrics data but also the scoring data comes across in that quality metrics data. We talked a bit about conditionals, the example here being I, if I have solids in my part, then I'm going to rename the part body to the part name if they're solids, and I'm going to rename the geometrical set if there are no solids. So in this case, I would have one requirement. The condition group is within the iCheck, ad, iCheck it administrator environment. So you would actually create conditionals in that environment and then use those conditionals to determine what you're going to execute within that, that, uh, that particular standard. And those conditionals can then allow you to use one standard across multiple teams or projects, whatever, departments, whatever, and I can control the checks or and or the groups and or the entire standard with those conditionals. So what's this going to do for you? I control the workflow so that when I pass things from one workflow station to another, one workflow status to another, I know that those items have been quality assured. The data tag will show that they've been a quality assured visually within the tree, and I can then use that to pass it down the downline process. Downstream pre-processing time, well, one of, the pre one of the downstream items is the promotion of the document, but there are many others. You might be preparing the document for sales, for inspection, uh, for budgeting, for receiving, uh, for NC machining, etc. And, and, and the example that we used here, prepare it for uh, prepare it for a design review. So you can have different standards that prepare your document for different situations. And then the last two, reuse of the data. Many times I have spent 30, 45 minutes reverse engineering what a very creative designer has done in a document to show somebody how to change what he or she has done. So if you use the tools to enforce your methodologies and best practices, then the reuse of that data is done a little bit more quickly. So the person could look at the organizational aspects. In this case, I've organized things in a certain way, in this case generic, but I've got my final surface here and the points that are critical in, in show so that automatically the individual that's going to make a change to this can see the status of the items and move forward much more quickly than having to reverse engineer what the initial person did. Thank you very much for your time and attention. If you would like additional information, you can send an email to iCheckIt at tatatechnologies.com. And for additional information online, go to the URL www.tatatechnologies.com forward slash iCheckIt Katia. Have a great day.